Welcome everyone to the second of three special sessions in honor of Women's History Month um, that are focused on the three mothers. If you did not catch the first in the series, well, first I recommend you go check it out. It's in the um, Women's History Month playlist on YouTube, so all of those will be grouped together. And these three sessions that I'm doing are all based on the book, The Three Mothers by Anna um, Tubbs. And it's a book that celebrates black motherhood by telling the story of the three women who raised and shaped some of America's most pivotal he heroes, being Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and James Baldwin. And having done the second one, I just blown away by these mothers. And um, I have to return to this somehow on, on Mother's Day in a couple months, um, because it's really um, highlights just how not we all know mothers important, but how really what a role they have in um in their children's lives and what the role they can have in society when you know they rose they raise their children a certain way with certain values and those children can go on to do great and wonderful things. So anyway, today we are going to be talking about Malcolm X's mother, Louise Little. Louise Little um, grew up on the island of Granada, and this was an island that was had a very full history of resistance to white supremacy and colonization. In fact, at one point um, when the Carib Indians there were faced with colonization, instead of surrendering, they jumped um, off a cliff to their death. Um, it was more important to them than they didn't want to live if they were going to be um, face uh, colonization. And it's interesting because when I was pulling together the notes yesterday, yesterday afternoon, and then last night, I was reading an article in a magazine about uh, um, the same thing happened in the Mariana Islands. Some of the native people who lived there when they faced colonization, they jumped off a cliff to their death. Um, different place, but similar, similar story. But anyway, so Louise grew up in this, um, on Granada, in this culture that really taught you to not live under oppression. Uh, Louise's grandparents were Nigerian and they had been enslaved, but they were able to gain their freedom and they fought for their freedom and for black pride. And Louise learned a lot from them, including the importance of fighting for freedom. So there was really this generational knowledge here. It wasn't just Malcolm, it wasn't just what Malcolm learned from his mother, but what she learned from her grandparents and further back just from their ancestors and from the very her very culture itself. Um, when Louise was 20, she moved to Montreal and then to the United States, and she joined an international mu movement for Black lives called Garbyism, which is something I, I haven't heard of before. And this is, Garbyism is based on Marcus Garby's belief um, in Black nationalism. And she did lots of work for them, including writing for their newspaper. While she was working with this organization, she met a fellow organizer at one of the meetings, Earl, and he was equally unapologetic about his strong feelings for Black nationalism. Garvey sent the two of them to towns in the Midwest to further inspire the revolutionary spirit there to fight white supremacy. And part of their strategy, this is crazy, but it was to intentionally be known by groups like the, the KKK and the Black Legion, which is similar to the KKK. So um, it was incredibly risky what Louise and Earl were doing, but they did it anyway. And they got married and they had children, but they continued their work to fighting white supremacy. And it was very dangerous. Some of the dangers that the, they encountered along the way, their house was burnt down at one point. Um, when Louise was pregnant with Malcolm. She was confronted by a group of men who tried to intimidate and scare her and get information from her. But what did she do? She walked outside, stood up tall, and she said that she wasn't afraid of them. And she showed them that she was pregnant, not that this would have prevented them from hurting her, but basically she's saying, here I am. And demonstrating that to her other children who were there with her at the time. So the little family faced um, many attacks 
against them over the years. When Malcolm was little, his dad left the house late at night and Malcolm later woke up with, and there was police officers in the house. The police officers took his mother Louise to the police station to identify her husband's, Malcolm's father's body. Um, it was reported that his death was an accident, but knowing the dangers faced by the little family, the family and their community all believed that it was an act of murder. And Louise had to go home from the police station and tell her seven children that their father was dead and had been murdered. So that was the, um, some of the growing up that what some of what Malcolm had to face when he was growing up. Uh, growing up in the in the 1930s, after her husband was murdered, Louise did her best to remain independent while she was raising her children. Um, but at the time, it was entirely legal for white social workers to enter the home whenever they wanted without permission for no reason. And she hated that, understandably. And these social workers would pull the kids aside and tell them that their mom was acting crazy and there was something wrong with her and plant the seed in the kids' heads that their mother was unwell. Horrible thing. Um, a white male doctor was sent to evaluate her. And in his report, he said, and this is a direct quote, she was imagining she was being discriminating, discriminated against. And that alone was enough for her to take, be taken away and put into a mental institution against her will. And she was there for 25 years. And each of her children were placed into various foster homes, including Malcolm, of course. Little, there's little information about what her life was like in the institution. The only record of that time for her is the letters that were sent between officials at the institution and a hospital, and which they just kept saying she continues to resist us because she believed she was beginning being discriminated against. Imagine that. Malcolm later said that he started to forget the vocabulary that she taught him when she was away. And he started to develop an anger about this. There is a somewhat famous story about how a teacher of his, when he was young, told him he couldn't become a lawyer because it's not a good dream for a black boy. And Malcolm, with his, with his mother gone, he didn't have that love that he used to be able to return to. And that person to tell him, don't you listen to that teacher. We believe in you. You know, you can, we know you can do more. So looking at who his mother was and what she stood for, plus how she was treated by the world and what she suffered, you can see the connections to Malcolm's black pride and independence and black nationalistic approach. There are letters to Malcolm X from his brothers that say, and once again, this is a, a direct quote, remember what mom taught us. And he wrote back to them, all our accomplishments are our moms. She was the first to teach us about this years ago. So the person he becomes really isn't a new identity for him, but returning to the person his mother originally taught him to be when he was still young before she was put in an institution. In 1963, the Little Family's petitions for Louise to be released were finally successful. But 25 years had passed from the 1930s to 1963, a lot changed in the United States in that time in the world. And she returned to a world that was so different from the one she had left behind 25 years before. So that must have been very hard for her. And then it was only a few months later after her release that her son Malcolm X was assassinated. She lived another 25 years after that until her death in 1991, not all that long ago. At this point in her life, after her post-incarceration and after Malcolm X had been assassinated, she was a way more private person than she had been before, her um, before being in the institution. And she really focused on her family during this time. But that same knowledge that she had previously passed on to Malcolm, in later years, she was now able to pass that on to her grandchildren. 
And her granddaughters have said that they really see themselves as their grandmother's keeper. Um, so Tubbs, the author of the um, of the Three Mothers book, she said that the sense of Louise Little that she was left with after researching her, she said the one word that comes to that would sort of she feels like represents Louise is power. Louise was very strategic. And she knew she was risking her life, but she was willing to. And there is a very great power in that for sure. And it certainly influenced Malcolm X, who influenced so, so many other people. And because of that, um, a lot of change occurred. So that is all for today's. The third mother in the next session, the last um, of these three in the series, we will be talking about the mother of James Baldwin. So I look forward to that and I will see you then.